Hello everybody, I'm Nick. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own project templates in .NET. Now, the catalyst for this video is actually a lot of people's complaints about Microsoft removing the original web API template from .NET 5 to .NET 6 and replacing it with a more minimal version. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can make your own ones and even publish them in NuGet to share them with your team. I've personally never worked in a team where we don't have our own templates instead of Microsoft's. So whatever knowledge you gain here can be applied to basically all of your projects and your company. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So let's start from where it all began. We have this old template and this template is the .NET 5 template and it's for Web API. And you have your controller here, basic stuff. And then you have the program.cs that points to a startup.cs and you have the iHost builder, which you run here to spin up an API. And then you have the startup.cs, which has the configuration, um, the configure services method that you use to configure your services, and then the configure one, which is used for middleware configuration. So all very nice and very beloved. Then Microsoft, and the only thing I've done to create this project is I went here and I selected web API for .NET 6, not .NET 5, um, went ahead and they use the new feature, so implicit using statements here, we only have one, and then file scope namespaces, so that makes sense. But then there is no longer a startup.cs, and now if you want to configure your services, you do that here, and if you want to configure your middleware, you do that here. I totally understand why people might not like this approach. So let's see how we can make our own template. What I've done here is I use the .NET 5 Web API template, and I create the project targeting .NET 6. And I used the features I liked, for example, implicit using statements or file scope namespaces, but then I put the startup.cs back and the program.cs the way it was. So how do we make a template out of this? Well, before I show you that, let me make sure we're all on the same page. So in .NET, you can actually use the .NET new command. And this new command is used to create new projects based on templates. So I can say .NET new double hyphen list and you get a list of all the installed templates you can use in this machine. One of them is the console, for example, and you can do .NET new console, O, and let's say my console app. And if I am to press enter, this will create a new project using that template. We're going to make our own of these, basically. So how do we do that? Well, let's load the project here. So this is the exact same project. It's just on VS Code, and I will explain why I'm doing that. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to the very top level and I'm going to add a folder called .template.config. It's just a special name for this sort of thing. And then I'm going to add a file in here called template.json. And this JSON file is where I'm going to describe my template properties. Now, because there's quite a bit of box standard properties, I'm just going to paste them here and talk you through them. So first you have the schema and you can actually go to that URL and see the schema that is supported in this project template syntax. Then you have the author, me, classifications. This can be an array of anything. It describes what are the concerns of this template. Then you have the identity, which is basically the ID, then name, and that's a short name for your template. And you can have a short name and this is what's going to be used um, here. So if I do again a .NET list, this is the short name and this is the name. Then the source name is actually a special one. What it will basically do is it will try and match that string anywhere in this template and replace it with whatever you specify as the name of the new project. So if I want to name this my amazing unicorn, it's going to take that and replace anywhere it finds my custom template here, a solution, directories, files anywhere with my special unicorn or amazing. I don't know what I said. And then you have tags like language and type. This is a project template for C sharp. And basically that's it. Now, once I save that, this is technically ready to be used. I can go ahead here and I'm already in the directory of this template and I can do .NET new double hyphen install. And I can either point to a new git package or I can point to directory. And I'm going to use the current directory, so I'm going to say dot here. And I'm going to install this template. And as you can see, my custom template has been installed. I can go ahead and do a .NET new list, and I can see my custom template here. And I can use that. In fact, I can do that here. I can say .NET new my custom template, and I'm going to give it a name, my amazing unicorn. And here you go. This has created the project. And I can go ahead and show you that this was actually made. And let's load it up in Rider. 
there you go project created and it has replaced all the namespaces all the folder structure even the launch settings.json here it has been replaced or even in the startup.cs where you configure the swagger support here it replaced that as well and also here so it is very intuitive and very nice by default now this can actually also exist in your ide rider for example if you go new will allow you to load more templates and i can install a template from a location so i'm gonna go to that template path over here and i'm gonna point at the very top level where my dot template dot config is i'm gonna say select so if i do a reload it's at the very bottom and i can go here and create a project using that template now how do we extend that because let's say i want to make i don't know maybe the target framework configurable i want the user to specify dotnet 6 or dotnet 5. now that would mean that things like implicit using statements or maybe file scope namespaces can't be dealt with but i'm going to show you how you can do that in a second first let's just focus on parameterizing this bit the dotnet 6 the target framework how do we do that well let's go here so the ultimate goal is to have a parameter for this property the first thing we want to do is we want to create symbols so i'm going to go ahead and say symbols here and these symbols can be many things we're going to use them for parameters it's very extensible the first thing i want to say is i'm going to give the name of the parameter i want so in my case it's framework and i'm going to say that this parameter is of type parameter and then i'm going to give it a description just to communicate what this is supposed to represent so i'm going to say the target framework for the project then i'm going to specify the data type for this because this can be a text this can be numeric but we want this to be well effectively a drop down but we call that choice here so we want it to be a choice and we're going to list the choices that we make available to the user so this is an array of objects and we have a choice entry here and this the default one is 6.0 but we might as well add the other choice which is 5.0 right so we have that and then why don't we just also add a default value for this and in our case it will be next.6.0 because that's lts and also we want to say what this is supposed to replace in our code so this replaces and here's where we specify text that will be identified in the template and replaced with that choice so since this is representing target framework i'm going to go ahead and delete that and use this angle bracket syntax which is what i prefer but maybe it's not too safe for you basically you want something that can only exist in that single location or anywhere you want it replaced if i was just to use this without the angle brackets then both this this and also this would be replaced with the new value so i'm going to use this syntax and paste it here and now what this will do is it will detect that and replace and in fact since this is a local template i don't have to update anything i can go back to rider and if i do new and i go to the template now i can select from the drop down the choice i just added and in the cli if i do the help command so dot net new the name of our template my custom template double hyphen help i can now see that this has the framework parameter added now replacing is one thing and replacing works the same with other parameters as well if you want to have a text replace maybe for a key or something or some other piece of name or some copyright you could totally use the same syntax will no longer be choice however you could actually completely remove this but what i want to do is i'm going to create a parameter based on whether i want to have swagger support so i'm going to say enable swagger support here and i'm going to create a second parameter i'm going to copy that for description so i'm going to say enables swagger support for the project why not and then have a data type which is bool because that's either true or false and let's say that the default value here is true so by default we enable it now how do we use this parameter in our code let me show you we can go here in startup.cs and i do understand that this syntax is a bit weird so please follow first you want to find where you actually want this if statement to start and you say at star hash if and then you specify the parameter and then where you want it to end like here you're going to say hash and if star and at that's the syntax i know it's a bit weird it is what it is and then we go back here and we do the same for the swagger bit in the bottom so here and here and now if i do a dotnet help 
I can get both framework and enable Swaggy support here. And I can use that. I can say .NET new, and I can give it the name, which is my custom template here. And then I'm going to say O, and this is the new name, test2, or just project without Swagger, let's say. And then I can specify capital F for framework. I want that to be net 6.0 and capital E, or you can have double capital and the full parameter name here, and then false. So don't enable Swagger support. And if I do that, this created the project. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And as you can see here, the project was created successfully without Swagger support, just like that. Now, how do we take this template even further? Well, let's say I don't want to include conditionally some files or do include them. For example, let's say I don't want to include the app settings dot development dot JSON by default. How do I do that? Well, I can go here and add a parameter for that. So I'm going to say include dev app settings. And it's still going to be like a Boolean parameter here. So I'm going to effectively copy all that and replace it. So parameters, adds app settings dot development dot JSON, which is this file over here. Let me just make sure I paste this correctly. Yes, I did. So by default, let's say yes, but you have the option to exclude it. How do we do that? Well, outside of this symbols area, we can go and say sources. And this is an array and we're going to have conditions for our sources, which is the source files. So what I want to have is an object in here and I'm going to call that modifiers. And these are an array of things. So the first object in the array and actually the only for this demo will be a condition. And the condition is in this parenthesis syntax when not include dev up settings. So when this is basically false, then exclude and we're going to exclude a file here. By default, this is an array, but we only want to do one. So I'm going to say uh, my.custom.template. So we're using the pre change syntax here. And then for slash app settings.development.json. So when this is false, it will not include that file. Let's go ahead and try this. If I do help again, you can see that we now have this include dev app settings. So I'm going to go ahead and use the previous command, change the name project without dev app settings rolls of the tongue and you know leave maybe uh this to true and say i which stands for include dev app settings uh false so don't include this so let's make that project project was created let's go back and see it and as you can see in here this did not include the app settings dot development dot json because we excluded it through the template. Now this just scratches the surface of what you can actually do with this template engine. So for that reason, I'm going to leave in the description, the documentation in case you want to go and extend it even further, but this should take you quite a long way. Now, how do you actually package this up? Because you can share this with other people. You can upload it in NuGet and allow people to use it. In fact, in here, there's a built-in functionality called .NET new search where you can specify a parameter, let's say search uh, react. And this will go hit NuGet and search for things or templates matching that thing. Netcore React, ASP, CRA, and I can install all these by pointing to that NuGet package just by name. So that's awesome. But how do you make your own? Well, actually, all you need is a CS proj looking like this. Now, this is a special CS proj. This is specific to your template. It is package type template. You can specify the version, the package ID, which is how you're going to upload it. Then, you know, your usual title, author description, and then your tags. The target framework doesn't really matter. And then you want to exclude some specific things and include some others here. But you can take that as a template and use it yourself. Now, where this is located is very important. You want to have this folder structure here at the very top where you have like your templates here and then you have this templates folder. So you want to have it here and call it whatever you want. You can call it my amazing templates.cs proj. But the reason why you need that is because you can actually run a .NET pack on that level and package up your NuGet package. The way you would do that is you got the very top where you have the templates and the CS proj right here and do a .NET pack. And this would run the NuGet package engine and it will create you a new package file that you can now use and upload to NuGet and share with other people. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching.
Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you can find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more, click the like, this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.